Oh Gott sei! Alrighty, you know what time it is. Another edition of Blind Wine Tasting. We've got six wines in front of us we have no idea about. We're going to taste them, assess the quality, how much we reckon they're worth, and what we think you should buy as far as quantity uh, for cellaring or drinking now. Depends what it is. Once again, sometimes always have sorted us out with all of these wines today. If you want a discount on any of the wines we try today, jump into our Discord channel. There's a little sidebar channel that says discounts. Also, um, just we want to kind of see what the vibe is out there. What are you guys drinking at the minute? Uh, we've kind of gone through a bit of a season change here in Australia. Stuff to get a bit warmer, get a little bit dr uh, drier, a little bit less rain. So kind of our drinking habits have changed. And I guess we're interested in what you guys are drinking. What wine are you drinking? Let us know what we should be drinking, no matter where you are. All right, let's taste some fucking wine. We're back, baby. No, I forgot to mention, 2K subs. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I can't believe 2,000 of you guys have been uh, either polite enough or interested enough to follow us doing this. Looks like we've got a traffic light this week. Red, white, red, white, red, white. Let's get into it. You know, it's one of these things you start looking at these wines and eventually you kind of go, it kind of looks like Pinot Gris, like Romato Pinot Gris, because I don't know, there's something really pleasant about this coppery color that I don't, you don't often see in other varieties. So we'll see what it is. Yeah, that falls into that avenue of like, really good textural uh, white wines in that kind of Italian style. It's got a really nice kind of biscuity shortbread kind of finish. Like it's got this nuttiness, this like brioche character to it that adds a little bit more complexity to something that would otherwise be a very neutral white wine. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's shardy. It's a shardy party. Hate it that right now you're definitely editing like the big bottle like blowing up and it says that it's not Chardonnay. I think it's really fun. I think it's really lovely. A little bit hot, uh, a little bit alcoholic. The flatness of this wine is the fascinating thing for me because I don't often see wines like this. Usually they're, they're, they're within a, a certain spectrum. This really sits out of that spectrum in terms of uh, acid presence. This is your friend that, you know, thought you wouldn't like it first, but then eventually like, no, he's the dude. Well, they are the dude. Why does it have to be a guy? Anyway, it's delicious. Moving on to a red, this looks like soup. Oh, that's cool, I love that. In fact, this is there's there's a little bit more going on here. There's a little bit of stem, there's a little bit of spice. There's, you know, it's this big core of primary juicy fruit and then everything else uh, brambly around it. Love the acidity here. Really nice and refreshing, fine, but really clean tannin. Lovely plump black fruits, lots of black cherry. It is very plump, I guess this is what I'd, how do I'd describe this wine. Ah, yeah, yum, cool. Fair bit of tannin going on, dries out your mouth a fair bit. Like it does have a little bit of that sort of, um, yeah, I, I don't know why I say cardboard so much when I drink wine, because I haven't eaten that much cardboard in my time, but it's just hard to like go past it as a comparison point. I'm a sucker for a lot of those big juicy reds, but finding juicy reds that just have the little smatterings of, um, I guess, savory elements, spicy, brambly elements that aren't overpowering, that aren't like a feature of the wine that really promote the feature of it being juicy, gives it, you know, I suppose what most people would call complexity. I'm gonna grab four bottles, niche, niche. Three to drink, like kind of in the next 12 months or so. One, maybe just kick around and see how it develops. Because I reckon this will develop rather well. 35 here today. We have a white wine. It smells awesome, it smells wow. I was expecting it to be a little bit like, uh, like a wooded wine. Yes, definitely something that um, really well thought out. There's no, you know, I'll oh, just press it off, put it in oak, see what happens. No, 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 this winemaker has got the budget, prowess and the skills to make something really elegant. This is a very elegant looking wine. Super drinkable. We were just lamenting the fact today, like it, we're starting to get like nice days in Adelaide for the first time in, I don't know, four or five months now. And we were lamenting the fact like, why are we shooting here? We should be shooting out in the balcony. And this is the sort of wine that you'd want to be drink in the balcony on like a nice, not too hot, not too cold because sun's out, uh, Riesling's out is what all the frat bros say. Lower-ish acidity. I don't would think that's a bad thing. I think this is a really easy drinking white wine. I would be paying around about 35 bucks a bottle for it and I want 12. I think that's delish. Not the most interesting and intriguing and complex example. I don't think this is that's what it's trying to be. I think it is doing exactly its job and it's doing it really well. Deeper red with uh, like kind of brick highlights that hue. So Alpine Nebbiolo, that's the gut instinct. But there is like this purple hue that's coming off the top of this. So I'm really, ah, there's a fucking purple light over there. Yeah, the color changing in that. I was like, oh, now it's gone green. No, it's just the fucking neons that we've got set up around the studio. Let's try this over here. Now nah, I'm sticking with it. There's violet going on in there. I'm not too sure whether or not we're talking about fine Barolo or fine Sangiovese. Here, to be honest, it's just, it's so densely packed in. Dried fig, dried um, like Sultana. 
is really lovely here. Love that structural tannin. I think this needs to open up a little bit more. So it's also a bit cold. I think this will probably, this will look really good when I come back in here, probably after about an hour or so. It smells better than it tastes. IMO, um, but you know, as much as it doesn't smell as good as it tastes, it doesn't taste bad. And the fact that it smells that good does make it a really enjoyable drinking experience. It tastes Italian, again, I don't know. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's fantastic. And I would happily drop $48 a bottle and buy 12. What an awesome daily drinker. That's fantastic. That, that probably is gonna come home with me tonight. Uh, number five, another white wine. Another little, lovely little white wine, a little bit riper. It's got this kind of green character too. That's like almost like asparagusy and um, peppercorny. Clear, filtered. Don't think it's going to be super natty by any means. Don't think it's going to be. Yeah, trying to convince me to go to Blues Fest next year, which you guys were trying to do before we started shooting today. Riesling smells like a, a white variety that's seen a little bit of skins prior to ferment, but not too much. Oxidatively handled. I'm not sure if you've picked this or sometimes always has done this, but each of these white wines is sitting in this like medium to low acid profile. This probably has the highest acid of all three of them. Yeah, it's just, it's particularly herbaceous. Yeah, like, it reminds me of Sauvignon Blanc. So I'm gonna go with like, I'm gonna go with like a New Zealand Sav or something, or like a Vino Verde or something like uh, some cheap um, Spanish wine. I'm not a massive fan of this lifted fruit sort of like pear going on as well. Every time I say something and they're like, yeah, that's a good job. That's kind of, it feels like I've handed dad the right spanner when we're working on the car. It's just like helping. And then I just guess everything's Chardonnay and they're like, hold the light steady. I would be dropping around about 30 bucks a bottle for it and I'll be buying six. Mainly because I can't, there's not a hell of a lot of distinguishing between that wine there and the other white, white wines and just white wine in general. You would need to be on it to be able to tease this out of a tasting of many things like it. Interesting wine, I'd definitely buy six bottles of it. See what the guys think. And number six, that is hazy as dick. What was the dude's name? Frederick, Frank Cornelson. I remember when we were talking about that on the episode and they were like, Frank Cornelson. I thought they were saying Frank and Eelson and I'm like, who the fuck's Eelson? Um, anyway, so one of his mates has made this is the point, it's a natty number. Here's an analogy for you. This is the um, this is the kid that had all the talent in the world, but just didn't apply themselves. And that's not to sting the wine. The wine's really quite good, but you can smell the the quality behind the fruit and the winemaker's definitely got some pedigree, but it's also like, nah, man, just kind of chilling out. I'm just like really enjoying it. I'm just gonna take it one day at a time. And that's really giving a really interesting phenolic grip to the back palate. Not a lot of acidity. So that's telling me maybe a slightly warmer climate. Don't think it's Victoria. I think it's Adelaide Hills. I'm gonna use the magic number 38 and I'm probably gonna buy 12 because I really dig the wine. I think it's such a cool, brilliant example. And at that sort of price point, if it's a good week, uh, you know, and paydays are up, then I probably would drink this as a midweek drink. I would definitely chug this down on a weekend. I think this would be really good fun, you know, with a barbecue or some yum cha. Just like really simple fun food. Um, but yeah, uh, cool, very little lineup. Definitely some some curveballs thrown in there. Some absolute, uh, there's one absolute stunner in here, um, but we'll see what the boys think. We're back. Uh, how'd we go this week? Um, I mean, look, I bought a lot of wine. Like, there's no yes, doubt so. about it, but I bought wines for different reasons. Like, I bought wines that usually I'll be like, oh my God, this is a banger. I absolutely want in my cellar. Yeah. And I bought wine on the basis of how much I'd consume. There's a drinkability yeah. factor to this wine. There's lineup. definitely some more drinkability like, in certain wines than others, for sure. There's some class in here as well. I can't wait to see how many ways I'm wrong about this wine because usually I limit myself to only being wrong one way. Like I'll guess what varietal it is, but this time I've gone, it's a variety yep. it's from this sort of climate and okay. from this specific region. Henry, why number what, one? what did you think about this wine? I thought that this was a Chardonnay. Okay. I thought that it was from a warm climate uh -huh. and from the Margaret River. Uh, I mean, mm. you couldn't, you can't really call Margaret River warm. Yeah, um, see, that's what I was worried about. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> I'll call it Chardonnay. Yeah. I wouldn't call it a Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> three for three, baby! <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing when people who know things about wines tell you it's not a Chardonnay, how instantly it doesn't taste like a Chardonnay anymore. Like when I was in here, I was like, oak, where the fuck's the oak gone? <laughs> There's no oak there. There's no, no oak. There. Could... Um, I, I was willing to drop 30 bucks and buy six. That's exactly where I was. I was six, six bottles, 32. Well, that's 50 for 12 because Margaret River, famously an expensive region. <laughs> <laughs> not entirely wrong there. Uh, Lockie, what is it? Hey, there we go. We got Put something right. Own. He's on Robert Rouge Chardonnay. You guys are going to have to get the fuck out of here. Italian white. There we yeah, go. Another cool. white that typically is pretty textual and can have pretty low acid as well. Um, Mungay, fantastic. Be bearer, really, really good. Uh, Very reputable uh, producer. I believe based up in uh, Barbaresco, mm -hmm. so the sort of more northern. I mean, look, Arnace has never been like high on no. my like agenda for white varieties, except for some that are like well out of, of um, Barolo. 
um, yeah. but still in Piemonte. Yeah, um, my th my thing with Arnais is that like I want I want to really want to pay more than thirty bucks for a bottle. So for me, like fifty dollar Arnais is never something I'm going to really explore. So as much as this is a very well made wine and very delicious, it's just hard to find myself forking out fifty bucks for it. You know that butter substitute? It's like I can't believe it's not butter. I yeah. can't believe I thought that was sharp. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? I was going to say it kind of tastes a little bit like butter substitute. <laughs> it's like there's there is, there is like, what's well, yeah. low acid and it's sort of like biscuity yeah. margarine. Margarine. Yeah, margarine. Thanks for Arnais, margarine. the margarine of wine. Yeah. Number two. Uh, number two. Uh, yeah, this is a definitely Banger. a well-made wine. Very, Banger. very well-made cool. wine. Yeah, I cool. love it. I thought it was Cab Franc. Really? Yeah, I thought it was Cab Franc or a weird Sangiovese on some kind of... Some it's kind got of a bit of pepperiness to it. It's mm. not a bad shout. Mm. I thought 50 bucks and 12, but I, I was a big fan of that. I was going all the way down the Shiraz path, and then I tried the last little bit, and there was this little last bit of acid that I got, mm -hmm. and I'm like, could be Nero Davila. I think it's Nero, personally. We are all over the shot. Yeah, it's, definitely. Yeah, it's, uh, I wanted four bottles at 35. Six to 38. Lucky. Yeah, uh, 15 and 12. 30. 30. Oh, very nice. Value Good value. value. Good value. Okay. What is it? What is it? Patch wines, shed red. Don't describe red wine. field boy? It's got to be a field blend, surely. Yeah. All correct. <laughs> yeah. There's no wrong answers when it's Please. everything. Uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, yeah. Malbec, Malbec Merlot, Merlot Petit Verde, and Bogaz, 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 Bogaz Curé, and Nero. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely get back oh. up like a, a Bordeaux vibe. Yeah, yeah but it's also um, Bogaz, uh, Bogaz Curé uh, is a Turkish grape variety. Ah. Uh. Course. Wow. Well, that's fools. embarrassing because cool. I consider myself an expert on Turkish. Yeah, we, and we've always course. known that for you, and that's why we kind of what we got you on the show. It's we we, we knew that would on. be like somewhere in the background. One day, hundred episodes on. And yeah. sadly, it's failed. Uh, and I've still fucked. At uh, thirty bucks, yeah. that's good value. That's that's good. If you want like a good kind of autumnal style like red blend for you know when it's a little bit chilly out, I love the little one. red wax top on the flint. Yeah, bottle. that's true. That is there's, a, there's a bit of a vibe there. It's yeah, cute. You guys can't see that. Oh, I'm lucky. Oh, we might. Yeah, yeah, not too bad. I like that. Have a look. That's good fun. One number three, uh, one of one up for Shawford for me. Really? Absolutely, 100%. I was a big fan. I bought 12, uh, so I bought 12 as well. I bought 12 as well. Hey. Clean sweep, fellas. <laughs> That's not even dry. No. I, at 35, I'd definitely buy 12. Imagine riding down 27 because I also wanted 12. Wow. 27. <laughs> <laughs> this wine's got so much class, I wouldn't, yeah. What have we got? It's lucky, what is it? Yeah, Oops. he's on it. He's picked yeah. it. He's right. picked it. Well done. Bo Aligote! Get <laughs> fucked! Fuck <laughs> Aligote! <laughs> Oh, that's so good. First I mess up that's the Turkish so wine, then I know oh. Jag Aligote. We yeah, 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 yeah. We've, we've known that you have always been an Aligote fiend. Okay, so there needs to be a prize. That's that, that, Like Maybe we could do like a monetary prize, like 50 bucks for the first person that actually picks Aligote. Actually. Yeah. Or Grenache Blanc. Yeah, how about we put in a pool every time you guess the variety. If you guess Aligote, you put five uh, you're, you're putting in. Yeah, five yeah. bucks yeah, in. Yeah, that's And if fun. you guess, get it right, you get the pot. Hands down the best Aligote I've ever had. That's yeah, 100%. That's really, really smart. Um, that is really smart. Yeah. Like it's yeah. one on four. This was my wine of lineup. Really? More than likely because it tastes Italian. It, it felt like Cabernet Italian. to me, but I want to raise this. Is it corked? Nah. nah. For sure? Nah. I just had an nah. inst I just had an instinct. Look, so I had this like cardboardy thing. 48. Hopefully, I, I was um, I was sitting fit, uh, on the fence here. I was I was initially six, but I'm not yeah. sure. How funny if it's under a screw cap now? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, then yeah, we definitely know it's not cork. Yeah. Uh, Lockie, what is it? Whoa, wow. value. Fuck me. It's under a screw value. cap. Value Chianti. It is, it is under a screw cap. <laughs> I told you Chianti. There you go. And it is under screw cap. So it's definitely. Yeah. Is that it under screw cap? It is under screw cap. It's not cork. <laughs> it is um, under screw cap. Well, that's really good value. That is really, Poggio really good value. Poggio Anima do a really, really good job. Um, and they do a good um, narrow too. I think it's Vine Street Imports in the States is mm. behind this wine brand. Yeah. If you're going home with someone from a bar and they've got that tattooed on them anywhere, run. <laughs> run. <laughs> There's no way. That is some pagan shit right there. <laughs> Um, yeah, cool. Next, uh, number five. I was not into this at all. Really? Uh, it was the one that I dropped down onto as well, but I had six. Really? I had yeah, six. It was just too grassy. It's super herbaceous. It was like very peppery and like asparagusy. I was just not particularly into it. I dropped back a bit. I still love, I still bought six bottles. I still thought I would drink it midweek. It was uh, pretty good. One bottle, 22 bucks. Oh, wow. Yeah. Six for 30. Ooh, okay, no way, okay. Jose. There's got to be some context to this. There's got to be context to this. Oh my God, a shabby. Oh, yeah, oh true. my God. It's a <laughs> oh, no, no, no. If, if you think it's Viano, it could well be Chablis as well. Oh, God. <laughs> it's super grassy. Yeah, That's why I, I booed in. It's not what I'm looking It's definitely got minerality. It's definitely got a great texture, but just the yeah, grassiness is not what I'm looking for in Chablis. We didn't cheer him in. We booed him in. <laughs> <laughs>
If anyone knows of another a trio of wine drinking people that love YouTube, like, I'd love to be a part yeah, of that. If, anyone, <laughs> if anyone's hiring. Uh, but anyways, moving right along uh, to a really good finish. Uh, this was really good fun. 100%. Juice. 100%. Yeah. Juice. Yeah, love, this. love this. Gotta be a local. Use the magic number. 38. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. Um, I said 40. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Inflation break. Being Inflation. Difficult. I thought it was like a natty blend from uh, the range. Uh, three bottles of 38, uh, but I'd probably up that to six maybe. Man, I'm 12 at 38. 12 at 40. This is my local lineup. That yeah, so I was cool. into it. I'm not going to oh buy many God. bottles of wine. <laughs> oh, I've no. I've just halved the amount of, I'm buying at 65. Oh, wow. Okay. This is um, an Entropy Pinot. This is Gippsland Pinot. So uh, definitely right. like well made um, and looked after Pinot Noir. But yeah, it just wasn't. It's still I, sick. I just, I'm upset that I can't afford it now. <laughs> 60, 60. Yeah, this is what, what I, I described this as like the. Um, the school report card read, um, uh, easily distracted, lots of potential. It's <laughs> That's so <laughs> <hell> funny. <laughs> but it's, it's like all of the classes there, it's, it's you know, been perfectly picked. The, the, the fruit itself is fantastic, but it's definitely like this easy going, a little bit laid back. So like, as you far know, as 65 bucks go, um, he's, the, he's the reigning Young Gun of Wine winner and... Um, you, know, I could, you can definitely see why, but for me, just that, yeah, this lacked a little bit of finesse. It's a really good suit that hasn't been tailored. So you won yeah. Young Winemaker of the Year last year or something. Unbelievable that I'm sitting here telling him how to make peanut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry about it. Dude, same. Myself. same. I'm the exact same. <laughs> uh, YouTube review is speak bollocks. We know this. Yeah, we know this. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, uh, One um, lineup. Oh, I got to say, baby. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. It's Who gotta be. knew that was Let's coming? Let's get the bucket up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cash yeah. out. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't play the pokies, I play the alicante. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, well, uh, that was a very interesting lineup, and we'll see you again next week. Ciao, ciao. ciao.